Hello there and welcome back to the channel. The other day I took this new thing of mine to do some light for by fouring. And I learned that it is as stiff as a plank. And as some of you might already know, I plan on taking this thing to this year's Toyota Rista Vinter Jamboree. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a whole lot more flex than I currently have. And those of you who have been watching this channel for a while are gonna, might wonder why I'm not taking the single cab to the Jamboree and that um, I don't feel like talking about that right now. Just know it's not my fault. It's not her fault. I'm not angry. It's just the double cab will be going to Jamboree. <laughs> now let's turn our attention to this thing and this thing and this thing i will not only be installing these longer shackles on the leaf springs but i will also be working some black managed magic on the actual leaf springs to try and reduce the spring rates on them to get more droop and more compression out of all four corners also please don't call me out for being white trash about the pool it started leaking we're doing reservations we just haven't gotten around to fixing the pool yet so for now we have a big white hole in our rear lawn i was going to set these down on the tailgate so i can talk to you about them but i am yet to install a chain on the tailgate so we'll be on the floor these are 40 to 45 millimeter extended front shackles and rear shackles these fun fact are actually out actually really meant for a 97 to 2012 isuzu but they are the same dimensions just about three to five millimeters longer than the actual rear shackles for the hilux and before some of y'all wonder why these are straight and not kinked this is a early model hilux with straight rear shackles not kinked rear shackles like the late models are so on their own the shackles will be equivalent to about a somewhere between a one inch and a two inch lift but i am removing blades from both the front and the rear leaf springs i'm removing two blades from the rears and one blade from the front so that is going to lose me some ride height removing the blades going to remove lo lose you about five to ten millimeters of ground clearance and then also you've got the extra sagging because you've now reduced the spring rate so let's get cracking Luckily, I slightly thought ahead. Last night, I went ahead and doused all of the nuts and bolts on the suspension in penetrant so that they will at least come off slightly less difficultly today. With that being said, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I'm not the handiest of people. I, I, for some reason, I always struggle a minimum of 20 minutes to get a vehicle up onto trestles. And I only have to do this once again today to do the front. Anyways, everything is up. It's important to detach your shock absorbers from the axle before you do anything. Because if you jack it up, there is a chance that your shock absorbers will actually limit the droop of the suspension. So once you jack it up and everything is nice in the air and your shock is still detached when you end up wanting to remove your shock absorber it might a not come off because you've got the weight of the axle trying to keep it on or b you'll shimmy it off and then your axle will droop even more and you'll have to restart the process from the start again so before you do anything detach your shock absorber and this is just the thing that i prefer to do i see it as good practice never jack up directly on the chassis rail metal to metal i mean if you're jacking it up, have a piece of wood or a piece of rubber puck. I know lots of there is a special product you buy for that, but never jack against metal and never have your trestle on the actual metal of the chassis rail. The, the wood is just to protect it. Now, if we climb underneath here, there are still a few things that you need to detach. Most important of all being your handbrake cable, because if you don't detach that, you might just end up bending this or damaging your actual handbrake assembly you might damage that little thing right there so just be sure it's a little it's a little split pin right there should you remove remove the pin and that all just falls apart good practice remove your load proportioning valve as well these are super duper temperamental once they go wrong they never quite get right and then it looks like i'm also going to have to remove uh detach that main brake line which i'm rather sad about because this thing's brakes are really good and i do not look forward to bleeding them again 
because if you're ble bleeding the brakes on these, it's a bit tricky because you also have to bleed the proportioning valve. There's another bleed spot that's not on the slave cylinders up front. It's a pain. It sucks. I hope I can get away with... Oh, no. I probably can just get away by detaching the actual brackets holding the brake lines on. Huh. Let me just see. Anyways, after you remove all of that, I'm going to go get my DAC DAC, your PORPOR, -por, whatever the hell you call it in your language, the impact gun, and I'm going to buzz off the U-bolts, and then this axle will probably come tumbling down. Before I buzz off the U-bolts, I probably should get a jack underneath the axle just to support the weight of it, because I don't want to be working underneath the axle when it comes crashing down once I loosen that last U-bolt, because um, that might result in a headache. Before I get into that though, please do leave a like, leave a comment if you've got something to say. Maybe comment about the new and improved, I hope it's improved because it's definitely new, video quality. I got a new camera after all. And if you're really enjoying the video thus far, do subscribe to the channel. Without any further ado, let's get back to the content. Quick tip with these old Toyotas, if you think it's a 13mm bolt, 9 times out of 10 it's a 12. Anyways, if we go under here, I made two very large mistakes while taking all of this apart. The diff is loose, by the way. That's just on the ground right now. It is free from the leaf springs, if you can't see that from here. Anyways, two things that I did wrong. First of all, I forgot to have a trestle underneath the pinion. Because the moment you release this thing from the leaf, the pinion is going to want to droop down, and that just makes your whole life very difficult. Have a trestle underneath your pinion to make sure that your pinion angle stays upright. It just makes everything much easier going forward. Second of all, I forgot to chock the front wheels. When I say chock, I mean brick the front wheels. Obviously, once you remove the rear axle, you will no longer have a handbrake. So have wheel chocks behind all of your wheels at all times whenever you're doing suspension work. It's just a good thing to do. With all that being said, we are now ready to remove the rear leaves. That's going to be quite easy enough. You're just going to need the impact and that'll come out here is a bit tricky these bolts right here um, have a tendency to just ruin your day I've done the rear shackles on my single cab before and those two bolts right there were the only things that made my life difficult usually these rust in place you can actually see where they protrude right there so you need to give them penetrant from the front end and the back end and leave it for as long as possible because these are very fragile and they will not hesitate to snap off so as long as you're careful when it comes to those specific little bolts removing a rear leaf spring should be an absolute cinch if you don't let the one and a half ton vehicle drop on your face but quite frankly you have to be very talented to manage that Now, somehow, in recording these clips, I managed to forget to put my microphone on. I don't mean, I don't mean for, forgot to switch it on, I just forgot about it. Here, I'm probably rambling about being hungry and wanting to eat, so yeah, at least I'm not missing much. Alright, after a short intermission, I now have food and water in my body, and it is time to continue with the work. I have the leaf springs marked. I used a punch to punch four holes in the passenger side and three holes on the driver's side leaf spring. First step would be to use this metal stick type thing and a hammer to open up all four of these clamps. Then I need to remove these clamps. Then I take the spring, clamp it in this big ass vise that we literally just had lying around and then I can remove the center nuts and get to work. The big vise didn't work. Luckily I had this mini vise also lying around. And the following is a disclaimer. I'm not saying you should do what I do. I'm just telling you what I am going to do. I have been advised by a friend who also used to own a double cab Hilux such as mine. I've not opened these up enough. Where was I? What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the one bottom overload leaf spring. This one, the very bottom one. 
that's going gone putting the pin here and now I build my spring back up from here I was advised to remove the leaf closest I've still not opened these up enough uh. so for storytelling reasons a time skip has happened I had to phone a friend and I where are they I had to manufacture something but we can finally get to assembling this spring pack let me just get this out of the way because that needs to be gone we are starting with the longer of the two overload springs you have the short one which sits at the very bottom that is going bye bye and then you take one of these this is literally just some galvanized sheet metal that i cut into squares to serve as Oh no, there you go. To serve as friction plates. What this will do is it will help provide, prevent binding on your leaves and it will give you a much smoother ride without impacting your spring rate. Then you take this. This is the very shortest of your main springs. You put this on. Nothing has changed so far, but now we get to where things change. You saw me remove this earlier. This is the blade that sits up against your main blade obviously you never touch your main blade that's literally the thing that holds the axle to the car but this is the one that's right by it right underneath it you take this get rid of it then you take what is left of the spring pack and put it back right after you have installed another one of these little friction plates get that on there Ooh. I swear, all these holes are the same size, but they just don't want to do the thing. There we go. And that is your spring pack built, pretty much. Now you just need to reclamp these clamps, put this little rod back in and replace the bushings and this will be back ready to go back into the vehicle all right there you go now you can see the difference between here the original spring and here the modified spring you have one two three four main blades and one overload on the modified and on the original you have one two three four five main blade and two overload and also the original does not have two of these friction plates to help with binding really nothing much to it and it's not even a bad task i have enjoyed this thus far all that's left to do to this modified spring now is cut that shorter so that the bump stop will slide back over it as you can see it's now too long and that is the furthest it will go so i need need to shorten this by about five millimeters but i'm just going to sort of cut it and call it good and then once more for clarity just so you can be sure of the recipe this leaf that i removed is one two three the third from the top this longest main leaf and this one is this one right here the very bottom the shortest overload leaf now i get to do the other side and put everything back together with the new longer shackles obviously you can go ahead and service these tidy them up give them a lick of paint give them a proper birthday i'm not going to do that because well i don't have paint i don't have scotch bright and i want to get that stuff in And now at long last we have reached the moment of truth. I can climb up out of the broken swimming pool and get those leaves back into the Hilux. The bushings are greased, the pins, where are the pins? Pins are clean to be greased. I've got the fresh bushings in there, those are greased. Those are ready to go in, all is good. And I'm aware that to grease or not to grease is a bit of a debate among the 4x4 community. I am in the grease your bushing camp. Always grease them. I mean, it just makes sense. Lube helps. Naturally, it is better to use proper red, uh, red rubber grease 
um, instead of a petroleum based wheel bearing grease like I used because I didn't have the correct grease because petroleum based grease will make the polyurethane or rubber slightly um, swell so they'll be, the tolerances will be a bit more tight, they'll go in less easily, your pins will go in less easily. So if you really want to make sure that it goes together as, easy as easily as possible, get proper red rubber grease. Otherwise, any grease is better than no grease. So there really is no trick to getting your shackle, your leaf springs back into the vehicle. It's just you mount the leaf springs first, make sure everything is tight not torqued yet remember you're not at ride height only torque your bolts on the bushings once the car is actually on its own weight and then you align the axle to the leaf springs you do not put the leaf springs on the axle and then try to get all of that on there that's just gonna be a bad time hello there I am basically ready to get this thing back on the ground. I just need to put the shocks back on. As you can see, this thing is currently at full droop. The only thing restricting the springs now are these little hang... Whatever you call those, those things right there. If this were longer, this would droop a lot more. But the nice thing about that, that is now acting more or less like a limiting strap to prevent me from blowing out my shock absorbers because where it is at right now I'm at the limit of my shock absorber like that is basically like currently where it's drooped to now is three millimeters below where my shock absorber maxes out so in the long run that will help me prevent help prevent my shocks from blowing out but if you're gonna make these longer uh, when you're doing this conversion you're gonna have to get other shocks otherwise you'll just be reaping no fruit but let me jack this thing back up real quick so i can get the shock absorbers on already i can tell this thing is going to compress way more it's probably going to compress all the way to the bump stops if i'm lucky yeah that should be good to get the shocks back on right all right the car is ready to go back on the ground ah <sighs> gosh Scary. Other side, quickly. There you go. Job done. Woo. Radio, it is tomorrow. This thing's already on trestles. You did not have to watch me do that again. Shock absorbers are disconnected. That's the word. Now I can just drop the axle, get the leaves out, and I can start doing magic. The rear ones were easy. I had a friend who had a recipe for them. Those were fine. The front ones are going to be a bit more tricky. I might have to disassemble, reassemble, disassemble, reassemble a few times. But we'll get there when we get there. Let's get to work. Springs are out. I've got... The left hand side marked with a little L, got the right hand side marked with a little R. That way I cannot get confused because the 4 dot, 3 dot system was way too confusing and I almost got it wrong. Anyways, now I can disassemble them. I've got my mini bias prepared already. Disassemble them and I can figure out my recipe. As you can see, there are five blades right here. The goal is to have only four blades left when I am done. So let's see what we can manage. I'm going to... Do this off camera and then report back with the results. Eventually. Right. After a undisclosed amount amount of time, I figured out what I think is the correct recipe for doing this. Here I have in my mini vise the pin for the front shackle, front leaf spring. I start with the very first and then I throw the dog, the tennis ball. I start with the first of the leaf springs, add a friction plate, and then I throw the tennis ball. Then I add the helper spring. This is full length, this goes right underneath the main blade. And then I throw the tennis ball, add that in. There you go. 
add another friction plate on top of it. Let me just show you the one that gets left out. This is the blade that gets left out. This is the second from the bottom. This goes bye bye. And then I throw the tennis ball. Then I take the main blade and I replace it. Be sure to get these the right way around because just like the rear ones, there's a short side and a long side. And also be sure to not, um, what's the word, pinch yourself when replacing it back into this little strap because I, I, I've done it before and it is not fun. Now I can go ahead, put all of this back together again and this should be the best combination I can make with the springs that I have at hand. I tried keeping this spring and removing the main helper spring, it was too soft. I tried removing two blades and adding in, adding in the overload blade from the rear that was way too soft and created two weak points in the actual blade, not weak points, stress points. So I think this will be the best recipe, but I am prepared to revise this in the future. I'm not sure if this will be 100% successful, but if this is wrong, I will either have to revert back to stock, which is not an option due to reasons, or I will have to custom order blades or get these retentioned or whatnot, whatnot. And then last but not least, I throw the tennis ball. Anyways, we are ready to assemble. Things are greased. My bushings are ready, my shackles are ready, my bucky is ready, my body is ready. I'm not going to do a whole time lapse thing like I did for the rear. I'm pretty sure you're getting sick of this video. So I'm just going to do one of these things and then it'll be done. But before I do that, I just need to add, you can remove the front leaf springs without undoing the entire front. You literally just do the same process as the rear, jack up the thing, drop the diff, get the springs out and they are out. You don't have to undo the entire steering and the torque rod and all of that stuff. It's almost even easier because you don't have a bunch of brake lines and brake cables, etc, etc, etc in the way like you do with the rear. Now I can get everything back together again. Oh yeah, and when you're doing the front, it'll be smart to have a crowbar handy. That is all I'll say. Tomorrow. Hello there, it is tomorrow and as you can see that thing is back on all four wheels. This, if some, the keen eyed among you would have noticed that this is the exact spot where that little clip I showed at the start of the video was. So I'm simply going to drive through and we can all watch it together and decide whether or not these past two days were for nothing or for something. I hope it was for something. I don't know about you but I would say that that is a large improvement over what it used to be. Obviously it could still be better. Things that are limiting me now are my shock absorbers both front and rear. The straps in the rear, the rear shock uh, leaves as I showed you and those secondary straps those are a bit shorter those are limiting as well. And maybe the bump stops? Or is it the bump stops? Uh, that's I'm not touching the bump stops. So just about everything except for the bump stops are limiting at the moment. But I can't go any further. In fact, I might have gone too far in the fronts. So might have to re revise the fronts in the future. Anyways, that is how you get flex on the cheap. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment. If you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.